The Red Dragon M711 FPS is a medium-sized, right-handed gaming mouse. Here it is next to the G Pro Wireless and the Death Adder Elite to help you understand the shape. It's a bit narrower than the G Pro Wireless, about the same length and about the same height. And compared to the Death Adder, it's much narrower, slightly shorter, and has a much smaller hump. It's a very safe shape and should be good for all grip styles, and I think it's best for medium to large hands. For smaller hands, I think it's too long. The material used on the top is a rubber coated plastic that feels good, it's smooth but also has enough grip, and the sides are a textured plastic. The only complaint I have with the build quality is the side buttons rattle a little when I tap them. If I hold in the side buttons and shake the mouse, there's no rattle. The buttons are good, I wish the left and right buttons were a little lighter because I prefer really light buttons, but they're still good, I like that they're fairly quiet and have a short travel time so they feel responsive, and the side buttons, other than the rattle that I mentioned earlier, they're good too. The scroll wheel is easy to press in and the scrolling is smooth and quiet, but it could use more defined steps. Here's a sound test of the buttons. The sensor is a 3360 which is one of the best sensors available and the liftoff distance is a little over 1 DVD on a cloth pad. They're advertising that it goes up to 24,000 DPI so they inflated the DPI numbers which is pretty stupid but it works fine. The regular version, the M711 without the FPS, uses a 3325 which is also on the M719 which isn't as good and has a high liftoff distance. So if you want the best sensor, especially if you play shooters, then I recommend spending the extra money on the FPS version. But if not, the regular one should be fine. It's hard to get an accurate measurement of the weight because my scale isn't the best and the position of the cable changes the weight, but it's somewhere between 104 to 109 grams. The cable is a stiff braided cable, which some people won't mind, but personally, I'm really picky about my mouse cables, so this cable is not good enough for me because I can feel it dragging when playing. The mouse feet are okay, they glide fairly smoothly, personally I'd prefer if they were symmetrical but it's not a big deal, and lastly, there is software for this mouse where you can change the DPI, the polling rate, the lighting, and some other basic stuff but overall the software needs improvement. For example, there's no option to not have it automatically start up when you start your computer, and the user interface could be a lot better. Overall, if you have medium or large hands and you don't mind a stiff cable and heavier weight, then this is a great option, especially if you're on a budget. Personally, I don't use it for gaming because of the cable and the weight, because I prefer lighter mice. But I like using it for browsing and regular usage because I like the shape and the material on the top. If you're interested in buying it, you can find the FPS version on Amazon for $30 and the regular version for $20. As far as I know, the only difference between the two is the sensor, which I mentioned earlier. So that's it for the review, hopefully you enjoyed, if you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have any questions or comments, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video.